boom. That's the sound of a nuclear bomb being dropped on the EV charging landscape in North America today. That's because seven automakers, BMW, Mercedes, Hyundai, Kia, General Motors, Honda, and Stellantis have come together to form a high-speed DC fast charging network to compete with Electrify America, EVgo, and even the Tesla supercharger network. This network is going to have both CCS plugs and the North American charging standard plugs at all of its locations, and it's gonna be powered by renewable energy. They promise us more than 30,000 high-speed DC fast chargers in both urban areas and highway locations. They're gonna start installing them in about a year from now. The summer of 2024, they predict their first site will go online. They're also gonna focus on an elevated customer experience, including digital integration, desirable locations, and amenities at the location. The press release also talked a lot about reliability, which if you drive an EV today, you know, other than the supercharger network, reliability has been a big problem across pretty much every other DC fast charging network out there today. So we're going to take a look at what was announced today with this yet unnamed network, talk about the implications, and also take a look at some quotes from CEOs of the participating companies putting this network together. Okay, so this news is really breaking. I just got a hold of the press release 15 minutes ago and barely read through it. So the first thing I'm going to do now is read through it here so you can see exactly what the press release says, and then we'll talk about what's in it and the possible implications moving forward. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. Seven automakers unite to create a leading high-powered charging network across North America. Seven global automakers, BMW Group, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz Group, Stellantis, NV will create an unprecedented new charging network joint venture that will significantly expand access to high-powered charging in North America. Targeting to install at least 30,000 high-powered charge points in urban and highway locations to ensure customers can charge whenever and wherever they need. With a focus on delivering an elevated customer experience, the network will provide reliability, high-powered charging capability, digital integration, appealing locations, various amenities while charging, and use renewable energy. Charging stations will be accessible to all EV customers, offering both combined charging system and North American charging standard connectors. First stations are scheduled to open in the summer of 2024. Seven of the world's leading automakers, BMW Group, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz Group, Stellantis NV, are creating a joint venture to accelerate the transition to electric vehicles in North America by making EV charging more convenient, accessible, and reliable. The joint venture will include the development of a new high-powered charging network with at least 30,000 chargers to make zero emission driving even more attractive for millions of customers. With the generational investment in public charging being implemented on the federal and state level, the joint venture will leverage public and private funds to accelerate the installation of high-powered charging for customers. The new charging stations will be accessible to all battery-powered vehicles from any automaker using combined charging system or North American charging standard and are expected to meet or exceed the spirit and requirements of the U.S. National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, or the NEVI program as we call it. The joint venture aims to become the leading network of reliable high-powered charging stations in North America. The joint venture is expected to be established this year, subject to customary closing conditions and regulatory approvals. The first stations are expected to open in the United States in the summer of 2024 and in Canada at a later stage. Each site will be equipped with multiple high-powered DC chargers, making long-distance journeys easier for customers. In line with the sustainability strategies of all seven automakers, 
The joint venture intends to power the charging network solely by renewable energy. The new high-powered charging network will elevate the entire EV experience and drive EV adoption. The network will provide a seamless, vehicle-integrated, best-in-class charging experience. That's important there. Based on renewable energy and supported by the quality, reliability, and resources of world-leading automakers. Focused on customer comfort and charging ease, the stations will be in convenient locations offering canopies wherever possible and amenities such as restrooms, food service, and retail operations either nearby or within the same complex. A select number of flagship stations will be equipped with additional amenities, delivering a premier experience designed to showcase the future of charging. Initial plans call for the development of charging stations in metropolitan areas and along major highways, including connecting corridors and vacation routes, aiming to offer a charging station wherever people may choose to live, work, or travel. The functions and services of the network will allow for seamless integration with participating automakers in vehicle and in-app experiences, including reservations, intelligent route planning, and navigation, payment applications, transparent energy management, and more. In addition, the network will leverage plug and charge technology to further enhance the customer experience. As more electric vehicles are introduced and the rate of consumer adoption increases, the demand for fast and reliable public charging also grows in parallel. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, as of July 2023, there are 32,000 publicly available DC fast chargers in the United States for use by 2.3 million electric vehicles, a ratio of 72 vehicles per charger. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory estimates that 182,000 DC fast chargers will be needed to support 30 to 42 million plug-in vehicles expected to be on the road by 2030. With US electric vehicle sales expected to exceed 50% of the total US sales by 2030, the expansion of reliable charging infrastructure will become even more critical to widespread electric vehicle adoption. The creation of a best-in-class charging network will ensure that the EV infrastructure will support current and projected EV sales and will foster the adoption of electric vehicles. Okay, well, it sounds great, right? 30,000 plus DC fast charge points, convenient locations, digital integration, amenities at the locations, and all powered by renewable energy. What's not to like about that? We all know the devil's always in the details, and this always sounds great coming out. And I remember Ecotality from 10 or 12 years ago, that was like the first major publicly funded charging network in the US, and it was a miserable failure. Now, out of that came the Blink network. That's Blink eventually took over the assets of Ecotality, and uh, they're still a functioning network right now. But the, all the Ecotality locations, I think all of them, are pretty much been shuttered at this point. I actually had an original station from Blink back when, God, 2012, 2013, uh, when Ecotality was just, I think they were just about ending at that point. But um, if the program isn't implemented correctly, it can be a failure. So while this is incredibly encouraging to see these seven major automakers doing this, let's wait and see how it's implemented before we get too excited. In any event, uh, this is going to be good news for the whole entire EV charging industry here in North America. At the very least, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Electrify America. Now, Electrify America is already feeling the pressure because now that it seems like the North American charging standard is going to be the connector that everybody is using, even though everybody hasn't come out and announced it yet, that's what we're going to be using here in North America. Since that happened, now the supercharger network is a direct competitor for Electrify America. It really wasn't the case before. Like Superchargers were for Tesla customers. Yes, Tesla customers could buy adapters and use the Electrify America charging network, but that happened very rarely. There weren't a whole lot of people with Tesla's using Electrify America and the other networks. Some were for sure, but really wasn't a major competitor because the people that had non-Tesla vehicles 
couldn't use the supercharger network, except for I think 12 locations now with the Magic Dock, and we never really knew exactly how many of those were gonna be installed and where they were gonna be installed. But now that all the makers are going to be switching over to the North American charging standard, Electrify America was feeling the pressure to improve. Now this adds that to another level. Now that there are other competitors, these seven major automakers, and you've noticed they said they're founding members, so I think they're leaving the door open for other car companies to come in and join. As a matter of fact, I'm sure they are. So there might even be more companies joining in on this at some point. Electrify America is feeling the pressure. And you know, the whole Electrify America network was born out of the Dieselgate scandal. They were forced to spend that money on this high-speed DC fast charging network. It wasn't like one day the uh, Volkswagen board of directors said, hey, let's dump $2 billion in North America and develop this fantastic DC fast charging network, you know, coast to coast to open it up so people can charge their EVs. They were forced to do it. And while I know the people here in North America that work at Electrify America, and I know them because I've known some of these people even since before they worked at Electrify America, they're working hard to do their best to make the system work as good as it could. We don't really know how much support they're getting from Volkswagen Group over in Germany. They could be handcuffed for all we know, that they maybe they're not getting the funds, the things that they're requesting to make the network better. And maybe this is gonna put that additional pressure on Volkswagen to put out a better network, to have higher station reliability, because let's face it, now, now that they're getting sandwiched between the supercharger network and now this um, yet to be unnamed network, there's not a name yet, we're supposed to hear the name later this year. Electrify America in the middle, they could just get squashed if they don't improve on their existing system. Now they've got a great head start on these companies with the locations and everything, but they have to provide more reliable charging. They have to even, in my opinion, have better communication, let us know what's going on. Right now, there's so many stations that are being derated across the country. We don't hear anything from Electrify America why that's happening. So now that there's a management change at Electrify America with a new CEO coming in, perhaps we're gonna have a little bit better communication moving forward. We haven't really seen that yet, but it's still new. He's just taken over, let's see what happens. But what I do know is that they are under pressure now between the supercharger network and now this network. Electrify America has to improve their level of service or they could fail like Ecotality did 10 years ago. So in any event, that's really what I have here today is just this press release. I just got it. I haven't even had the opportunity to really speak with representatives from any of the companies. Of course, I sent some emails out. There's going to be follow-up videos here on this, and I'm sure I'm going to be talking it on our weekly podcast. But uh, what I would like to do now is each company's CEO put out a quick statement on this network. Let's take a look at what all seven of those CEOs said before we wrap things up. The BMW Group CEO, Oliver Zipsy says, North America is one of the world's most important car markets with the potential to be a leader in electric mobility. Accessibility to high-speed charging is one of the key enablers to accelerate this transition. Therefore, seven automakers are forming this joint venture with the goal of creating a positive charging experience for EV consumers. The BMW Group is proud to be among the founders. General Motors CEO Mary Barra, GM's commitment to an all-electric future is focused not only on delivering EVs our customers love, but investing in charging and working across the industry to make it more accessible. The better experience people have, the faster EV adoption will grow. Honda CEO Toshihiro Mibe, the creation of EV charging services is an opportunity for automakers to produce excellent user experiences by providing complete, convenient, and sustainable solutions for our customers. Towards that objective, this joint venture will be a critical step in accelerating EV adoption across the U.S. and Canada and supporting our efforts to achieve carbon neutrality. Hyundai CEO Yehun Chang. Hyundai's investment in this project aligns with our Progress for Humanities vision in making sustainable transportation more accessible. Hyundai's expertise in electrification will help redefine the charging landscape and we will look forward to working with our other shareholders as we create this expansive high-powered charging network. Kia CEO Ho Sung Song. 
Kia's engagement and investment in this high-powered charging joint venture is set to increase charging access and convenience to current and future drivers and therefore accelerate the transition to EVs across North America. Kia is proud to be an important part of this joint venture with other reputable automakers as we embark on a journey towards seamless charging experiences for our customers and further strengthening Kia's brand identity in the EV market. Mercedes-Benz CEO Ola Kalanis, the fight against climate change is the greatest challenge of our time. We need now to speed across political, social, and corporate boundaries. To accelerate the shift to electric vehicles, we're in favor of anything that makes life easier for our customers. Charging is an inseparable part of the EV experience, and this network will be another step to make it as convenient as possible. Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares, we intend to exceed customer expectations by creating more opportunities for a seamless charging experience given the significant growth expected in the market. We believe that a charging network at scale is vital to protecting freedom of mobility for all, especially as we work to achieve our ambitious carbon neutral plan. A strong charging network should be available for all under the same conditions and be built together with a win-win spirit. I want to thank each colleague involved, as it is a milestone example of our collective intelligence to listen and serve our customers. Okay, it sounds like they're finally getting it. And as the Mercedes-Benz CEO said, EV charging is an inseparable part of the overall electric vehicle ownership experience. If your charging experience is poor, your ownership experience is going to be poor. So I'm glad that it seems like they're finally realizing that. Tesla understood that from day one. The first thing they did was start building out a high-speed DC fast charging network before they had hardly any cars on the road. They had you know, a few thousand vehicles on the road when they started doing this. And it seemed like everybody else kind of wanted somebody else to do it. That's not our job. You know, we'll make the cars you figure out a way to charge them. And as I said earlier, even Electrify America, the Volkswagen Group, they didn't want to do it. They were forced to do it. And what does this mean for Electrify America? If this new network launches and has great locations, really good amenities, and high reliability, does that mean EA's dead? I don't think so. I think they're going to take this more as a, a kick in the pants and an inspiration to get things going. And uh, I think they already understood that now with the North American charging standard and how the Tesla supercharger network was going to be a competitor. They weren't just going to be, you know, running in parallel. They were just going to be a direct competitor. People were going to say, well, the, my car uses the North American charging standard or I have an adapter for CCS. I can go here or I can go here. I think I'll go over here because I'm fairly confident it's going to work the first time I plug into the supercharger. Could you imagine if this new network is that reliable? We don't know that. You know, it could be even worse than Electrify America has been so far. Uh, but I, I seems like they get it because they're stressing reliability in this press release. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the devil's in the details. And you could say all you want in a press release. Let's see what happens once these things get in the ground and we get to use them. It looks like we're only going to have to wait about a year because the first station is going to launch a year from now. They said tw summer of 2024. So we won't have to wait too long to be able to try this out. Um, now, this is just uh, my first initial response video. I wanted to get it out quickly because we just got the press release, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, less than an hour ago, and I wanted to put something out there. I'm going to be doing a lot of evaluating on this, and hopefully I could even get uh, some of the representatives from these companies on the channel here to to talk about it and, and, and do some interviews. It'll be interesting to get uh, somebody on here for an extended period of time and really poke around and maybe find out uh, exactly what's going on behind the scenes and what inspired them to do this. Do these automakers view this as an existential threat if they don't have EV charging or companies like Tesla that have great EV charging going to crush them? Uh, or are they worried about the fact that uh, companies like uh, Electrify America are going to make a lot of money selling energy down the future and they don't want to lose out on that revenue? Uh, there's a lot of questions still to be answered here, but this was, as I mentioned earlier in the video, a nuclear bomb today. It's been dropped on the EV charging landscape in North America. A good one, though, because there's going to be more competition, more chargers, and uh, that's probably going to rise the level of re reliability for everyone. Well, hopefully it will, because with competition, you either get better or you die.
Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.